trade offer. There you go. Lurch will now be cast aside, but the budget will be more on uh, more content, lesser animation and visuals. Trade offer. Kadokawa. Studio Engi. <laughs> Look up the Marxism theory. Because we study that. Marxism theory has the superstructure and base. Studio Lurch is the base. Kadokawa is the superstructure. They gain profit, but the base is the workers. And that is Studio Lurch. Go ahead and study that theory because that's all you need. It's an eye opener. Yo, what's up, TFM Nation? It's me, the TFM Hunter, here again, and finally I'm doing this. <laughs> okay, this will be the last episode of my honest feelings and review. I'm gonna keep it brief. Liar! I only have the time right now because I literally finished, all of us actually finished uh, most of our homeworks. So I have some free time, so yeah. And I'm doing this right now, so I have a lot of pending videos, and this is one of them, so I hope you all still enjoy. But I'm gonna keep this brief, and this is the end of volume 11.5. Literally the end of the first year arc of Clash with the Elite. Um, what do I think about this final episode finale of the first year arc? They adapted it decently. I wouldn't say it's the best, because it isn't. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, anyway, let's just uh, jump right into this. So it's literally the title, Love is the Best Teacher. That's literally the translation. I think that's French because it says Amour. Yeah, that's the title. And it's literally complimenting what's going to happen in this episode. So so we were all wrong about this scene. Um, They literally moved the Hiyori date. I'm just not going to say any more than this. And I'm not going to do the things that um, that are cut out. I'm just going to mention it. I'm not going to detail it out because I'm really exhausted. Like like I said on my community post, that is why I've been very inactive for like four days straight. Mainly because I got so busy after Holy Week and then I just can't do videos. So yeah, now that I can, Clash with Elite Honest Feelings and Review, final Honest Feelings and Review for episode 13 will be my very first video after my uh, long hell week. <laughs> after Holy Week, it's hell week. So yeah, literally. <laughs> anyway, so I'm not going to detail this out, but they basically moved the Hiori date. Hiori date is one of the very first few scenes in the novel. So that is why when I saw the adaptation on the last episode, which is episode 12, um, I thought they were going to cut this out because, uh, yeah. Anyway, they did cut out a lot as expected, but it is what it is. We cannot, we cannot control this, okay? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm in the process of doing the state of Clash of the Elite, the series and the fandom. I'm in the process of making that video. I'm going to troll every damn fans of this series and the series itself. Like, I'm literally going to joke about it, although it's the truth. <laughs> it might be a joke. It might be a troll, but it's the truth. Okay, I'm going to make it entertaining for you guys, but it's the truth. Let's just go jump right in straight to the point. They cut out the scene. They literally removed it. They made Nagumo a total asshole in the anime. And yeah, they literally cut out all of the interactions with Aeon Koji and Nagumo. None of them were adapted. All of them were cut out. They never had an interaction in the anime whatsoever. What the fuck? Not only that, but they also cut out the Hirata scene where uh, Hirata was actually asking Ayana Koji to call him Kiyotaka, first name basis, because, yeah, he wants to be his friend. So, yeah, people like myself in the past meme it as gay. <laughs> gay! You'll get it in Japanese culture, you know. It's uh, it's about 
uh, how you want to be close to the other person, you know. So yeah, Hiori date is in page page 142. This is the Hiori date. So that is why when I told you guys they jumped to page 300 plus for that Suzune short hair adaptation. <laughs> yeah, I got I was shocked. So yeah, um, it was decent. It was a decent adaptation for Hiori date, and then yeah, K Jealousy, yeah, and. In the light novel, K was actually messed around by Ayana Koji. <laughs> Ayana Koji literally went ahead and said, Yeah, I'm gonna play with K so that my chance of success for K to be dating me is 99% or 100% sure. It's a guaranteed date. Like, <laughs> I can get K. <laughs> you know, that is why they did this and they showed K with the necklace too that Ayana Koji gave it give her with the intention of uh, making her jealous by using Hiori for that date and then this scene it was so short they didn't even address what um, Hashimoto was actually teasing Ryuin about Ayana Koji but Ryuin was unfazed when he heard Ayana Koji so it's not a pointless conversation that is why I was actually shocked that they cut that out but yeah at least they adapted Kanzaki, Hashimoto, and Ryuin about Kanzaki's involvement in year two. So, yeah. As well as Hashimoto. So, yeah, the boys. They didn't adapt this illustration, but they adapted the scene. <laughs> so, this one is also short. But I cannot believe that they adapted this. This was so unexpected for on my part that they adapted the Ishizaki scene. Like, Ishizaki is inviting Ayana Koji to join Class C. They're now Class C again, so, yeah. Bear in mind. So, yeah. And then the Ichi Nose scene. Golly, this is uh, not good. <laughs> oh, hell no! They censored Ichi Nose's clothes. Knowing Lurch, this is not how they do things. This is not how they usually do things with the girls, the waifus of the anime. Keep in mind, Lurch does not do this. Why would they censor Ichinose's clothes? This was their chance to actually show Ichinose's bra. <laughs> naughty, naughty. I don't want to say it, but yes. Because of the soaked, drenched clothing, you know, wet clothing. And not only that, as you can see on Ichinose's clothing, she has long sleeves, but... On the illustration, she is sleeveless. Like, as you can see right here, she is sleeveless. This is Lurch's time to actually, you know, use Ichinose as <laughs> as a fan service bait. But, no, they didn't. And then, they mostly didn't adapt this as good as the light novel as we imagined it to be. So, yeah. Ichinose fans were grateful and at the same time not grateful because of the way they adapted this from what I remember as well I don't think it was the cheek that Ayana Koji touched Ichinose I really thought it was the lips like that like that okay let me go back here because I was shocked I was shook that Ayana Koji said this I was like Ayo, <laughs> ayo, ain't no way they did the Yana Koji and Edge Lord again. And, uh, and, well, Lurch actually adopted what was in the light novel. <laughs> well, it's already hinting year two. It's hinting year two on as to how Ayana Koji is going to use Ichinose. So, I am not gonna go into details about that, but yeah. Yeah, okay, it is in the light novel. I reread it. However, should class be full, I would be the one to finish Ichinose off. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> As you can see, they adapted that. They adapted an edgy line. Okay, so which, uh, what will happen to class B in the future? Even though there were many things to be pessimistic about, the future had yet to be determined. Yeah. Okay, so they adapted that faithfully. <laughs> yeah. See, okay. Let me read this part. When I moved, Ichinose reacted strongly almost to an excessive degree. Looking up at 
looking up at me. I moved over Ichino's side and sat down, catching sight of her gaze. From her eyes, it looked like she wanted to run away. Ayana Koji-kun. I reached out with my right hand and touched Ichinose's hair, then lightly placed my palm against her cheek. I felt a cold, soft sensation, and then there was a faint building heat that I could feel through my fingertips. Then I moved my thumbs and gently caressed her lips. As I did so, the trembling of her body started to lessen, and eventually her lips also stopped quivering as well so i was right ayana koji actually touched ichinose's lips not only that he just went ahead and caressed her hair then her cheek then her lips no wonder why ichinose fans are rioting on that scene yeah they they literally downgraded that adaptation not a fan <laughs> Like I said, not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. Disappointed! Oh, this. Okay. When Ryu and Ayana Koji met up in the light novel, um, it's way more you know, detailed, planned. People were actually memeing the heck out of this. Well, they said, oh, wow, entire, the entire budget of Classroom of the Elite Season 3 is in this particular episode. One short clip it's sad that people the fans are spoiled so much of classroom with elite to the point where oh this is the only animation budget that they have it's all in this particular episode yeah it's sad to me it's just sad that fans are ignorant their love towards the series is now blinded by hate it's just sad I am never going to be a part of this stupid fandom, this stupid, hateful fandom. Like, after season 3, I'm done with this stupid fandom. This is my last straw. I'm never going to advocate about Clash of the Elite whenever it gets an anime adaptation in, in the future, sure. How about we do this? What if? Kadokawa was like, oh, okay, let's uh, let's adapt the whole book. All right, okay, let's do it. Let's give them budget. 24 episodes, right. Two core, split core, all right, first core. Year 2, volume 1 to year 2, volume 2. And then the, the next core will be year 2, volume 3 to year 2, volume 4. Studio, Engi. Cine. Am I in this year? You know Studio Engie? The one that did The Detective is already dead. I'm not trashing Studio Engie. I know they did um, the Isekai comedy anime. I like that, but if you've seen The Detective is already dead, that one deserved so much better. It got butchered by Studio Engie. The animation is so bad, like it's below average. Classroom of the Elite is not even an average animation. It's almost average, but a bit above than average. It's not more than above average, but it is slightly a bit above average. So trade offer. There you go. Lurch will now be cast aside, but the budget will be more on uh, more content, lesser animation and visuals. Trade offer. Kadokawa. Studio Engi. That's right. What other studios do you want this to get animated by? How about um, other lesser famous studios that are actually small? And then let's set a deadline for these workers. Let's exploit them so that we garner more money. We gain more money so that we can rip them off. We can rip the workers off. They get overwork, but we don't get to pay them much. It's just the sad reality, man. You have no idea what's inside the entertainment industry. The reason why I'm studying film is also because of my love and passion for filmmaking. And at the same time, for me to actually open my eyes in the entertainment industry and the film world. Here's what I love about my perspective in Clash with the Elite is that I am not, I am, I am never backing down my point of view and my position as a part of the media 
uh, on how they adapt source materials, okay, in the industry. At the same time, a fan of the source itself. I will understand and I can understand what the workers are going through and at the same time what as a fan I expect and my impression of the adaptation okay it's an expectation as a fan and at the same time an understanding as a professional okay that's how I view Classroom with the Elite but this stupid fandom I'm sorry I'm rioting right now this stupid fucking fandom is complaining more and more and more without knowing shit about entertainment industry and it just sucks back in the day when i watched season two i had no idea about the production studio lurch was going through that is why when i said oh wow dog shit animations Wow, slideshows. Didn't you see? They outsourced a lot of episodes. Majority of the episodes in season two were outsourced. Not because of their budget, but because of time. They had a limited time because they have a date, a set date for the schedule of the anime. But they don't have enough time to polish the anime. That is why. The way they can polish the anime is through Blu-ray because that is where they can actually get more polishedness in the animation and visuals. And if you noticed in season two, season two was actually horrendous. Like the workload was horrendous. It was horrible because the Blu-ray got delayed instead of its initial release in probably October right it was supposed to be october right and then it got delayed to december do you have any idea what that meant that's the entertainment industry okay plus studio lurch is i can really sympathize with studio lurch what they're going through right now because they want the studio want to meet the fans' expectations but at the same time, the given amount of time that they were given by the producer, Kadokawa, and the episode limitations that they were given by Kadokawa is not enough. Because they're not the boss. They cannot control the anime when it comes to, oh, yeah, um, uh, uh, how many books do you want me to adapt in one season with only 13 episodes? Oh yeah, adopt five of these books. Yeah, in one season. Yeah, all of them have 400 or 300 plus pages. Almost 500 pages each book, by the way. Yeah, go ahead and adapt that studio, Lurch. Yeah, Kadokawa, us Kadokawa members, producers, gain more money from you. See what I mean? Sorry, the video is going to be a rant. That's why it's long long video that's why when when i will do the state of clash Medelite, the fandom in the series i will give out all of my emotions in that video back to the video uh shortened but also greatly adapted but they cut out where ryu and said i don't know koji is the monster is a monster there you go and i can't believe they didn't cut the scene out but yeah it was pretty important for Matsushita as well <laughs> because Matsushita was the one who gave Anakoji the push and then Sato as well for a year two and then Shinohara they teased it a bit it's about Ike and Shinohara so yeah and then the Tsukishiro talk it was so short I expected this they didn't even give us a hint of you know like a silhouette of the students but anyway the white room students that will be in year two which will be yanakoji's kohai and then yeah the matsushita scene this scene was altered or changed like i said in the light novel it wasn't like this it was supposed to be like this it wasn't supposed to be a phone call but it was supposed to be like this before suzanne got to talk to manabu this bet was so short and plus, it's not fleshed out in detail because in the last episode where Ichinose talked to Ayana Koji and Suzune, 
Ichinose actually pointed out that Ayano Koji or their class wants uh wants to challenge class A in the uh the final exam of the first year. That's where Susan was like, What the fuck, man? <laughs> you were the one who ordered Ichinose? <laughs> yeah, that is why she got triggered, she got ticked off. That is why she wants to test Ayano Koji's abilities and yeah, it wasn't flushed out. I pointed that out in uh, my Honest Feelings interview in the last one, but you can just read the novels. Like I said, this is so short, and plus it's altered. It's on the phone call, but yeah. Then the confession scene. I can't believe they actually gave a lot of uh, uh, a runtime, screen time for this scene alone. The confession scene was actually very, very good. It was adapted very well. And then... People generalize this. It does seem manipulative. It is, yes. Because it's because Ayano Koji said textbook. Um, he did actually say that in the light novel. But Ayano Koji wants to change. And that is why when I was watching Anime Watchers, it's a 50-50. Okay? The, the first half or the half, the other half, they understand what this scene or what this moment meant. For Ayana Koji's character. Because Ayana Koji wants to change. And that's why when he said. I'll find myself in a future where that's not the case. Where Ayana Koji will trash K when she's done. When she has served her purpose as the love textbook. The romance book that he needed to learn. So yeah. That's why when he said I'll find myself. Or I'll find myself in a future where that's not the case. Where. He won't set aside K, but actually love her to the end. So, yeah. That's why when he said, let's pray, or please, I prayed in the Musasia. And plus, I think that's actually the real subtitle, because from what he said, Doka Inoro, please, I prayed. And then, yeah, that in this, I prayed that in this moment, holding someone precious in my arms, that I'm smiling. But, as you can see... He isn't smiling. People have actually misunderstood or actually memed the heck out of this instead of actually understanding what this scene is supposed to be. The other half understands, but the other half, like the other 50 that I mentioned earlier, was memeing the heck out of this. He's not smiling. Oh my god, he's using K as a textbook. Oh my god, typical edgy and anime character typical edgy Ayan koji you know they just don't get it ayana koji wants to change ayana koji actually just wants to be to him his purpose is like what's normal what's actually normal as a human you know because in the white room he was born and raised in the white room without actually having human interactions like normal human interactions no emotions that is why when he got there in in the in this elite school advanced nurturing high school he has no emotions not until year two <laughs> yeah when he said that i'm smiling it's a hint that one day he will smile in year two <laughs> that is why <clears throat> spoiler territory that is why ayana koji is now gonna cast a side k because he's she's not the one that actually made or makes Ayana Koji smile, you know, unconsciously, like genuinely smiling. Because in year two, recently and currently, uh, Suzune was the one that made Ayana Koji smile. So that's a strong hint that uh, Suzune will be the end girl, but we'll see. Um, it's not determined yet, but we'll have to wait and see. But this is a hint as to what Ayana Koji actually wants. You know, and that is to be an actual human, you know, with emotions. And what are these emotions that because to him, this isn't a classroom of the elite, you know, to him, he wants to live as a regular human being, you know, like he wants to experience new things that he has not experienced in the white room, never experienced in the white room. These regular normal things that he never got to achieve or never got to experience in the white room. He wants to experience these things 
for these three years in in this school so yeah and i'm glad that people actually got the message that ayana koji is actually trying to say in this scene so yeah um those people that are actually memeing the heck out of this you know that ayana koji is just emotionless I beg of you to just understand the anime. That is why if you want a deeper understanding of Ayana Koji's character, just go ahead and read the books. That's all you need. Because in visual representation, they will do a poor adaptation or representation. That is why it's a very misleading at times. So yeah, the one line where he actually always says, Kore de i. Or that should do it. I was one of the first people that actually memed that line. <laughs> I think I was actually the one that actually clipped every single time he says Kuridi. <laughs> I was the one that uh, clipped that. Every every clip of season 2 and 3. <laughs> it was super generalized. It wasn't supposed to be edgy. But, you know, anime viewers will take it as edgy. But yeah, anyway, they did well with the adaptation, but yeah, on this confession scene. But I would have to give this particular episode, once again, an 8.5 out of 10. Uh, it's not the best, nor was it the worst. Um, I think my poor rating or score would still be the Tsukishiro scene. I just overhyped that for no reason after that because yeah it was disappointing afterwards when we saw the adaptation but um yeah anyway though i'm glad that first year arc is done because to me first year arc was a wild ride to me it came full circle so yeah that's why to me it's it's very special that's why I adore Clash of the Elite Year 1. Year 2 right now is a mess. But we'll see on how they conclude that. But yeah. It's up to Kinegasa Sensei. But I wish him well. Because he's uh, he's very sick right now. He has hernia. Based on his postscript. And um, yeah. Or afterward. So yeah. Um, I did my full review on Season 3. But I'll have to actually split that again. Um, in my next video, which is the state of Clash of the Elite. Okay, it's time for rant. I'm not gonna edit this as much, okay? Because I have a lot of pending videos, but yeah. Anyway, you guys have no idea, okay? You guys have no idea what the entertainment industry business is all about. It's all about money, profit, because that's how we live, right? It's a necessity, okay? And people just don't get it. Generalized fans... Do you even call them fans? You know, this is the problem about fans is that when you read the source, the same amount of excitement that you had when reading the book is not on par with the adaptations most of the time. And I heard many people from the Harry Potter fans, you know, Harry Potter is successful in the film industry. But when you ask the fans of the novels, they will be like, oh, it's terrible. You see what I'm saying? Learn to actually split your side as a fan of the novel and see for yourself the visual elements, the visual adaptation. Here's the thing. Here's my point of view. If you're a fan of the series, okay, it it's a good thing that I read and it's a good thing that I am a part of film. It's a good thing that I'm that person because I understand both sides. As a fan myself, am I satisfied? Honestly, if I am not a part of the film, think of a jig, like how they work and knowing nothing, like learning nothing at all about the entertainment industry, how they do things, creative industry and et cetera, et cetera, the, pro the, uh, the productions and stuff. Like, if I didn't do research and all that, because as film students, we all have to research and how, uh, on how they do things and how they develop things, produce things. So, yeah, the productions. And plus, we make films. So, I know the struggle and I know how hard it is. 
if I'm not a part of that, if I'm not a part of film or entertainment, creative media, I would be one of these toxic fans. So if I were you, you should be shameful because you have to research, you have to educate yourself and understand what Studio Lurch is going through. Because Studio Lurch, I've been satisfied. I've been completely satisfied with their adaptations in Clash of the Elite. They change things that I actually like and they change things that I don't like. And plus, they cut out things that I do not like. What I actually gave praise for Studio Lurch is that they did so well. They did their very, very best. They did their very best to adapt Clash from the Elite, the first year arc. Because without their love and passion for the series, I think Clash from the Elite would be just your generic anime. But turns out, without Studio Lurch, it wouldn't be as successful as it is right now. Because if it wasn't for Studio Lurch, I wouldn't have picked up the light novel. Okay? With that cliffhanger of season 1, I wouldn't have picked it up. Because visually, they left it in a very, very good mood and note for the series. Like, oh my god, it's the, char the main character is, just, is like this? We had no idea at the time. We know he's a genius, like hiding his abilities and skills. But we never knew what's in his mind, what he's thinking. So that is where most of us, the fans of Clash of the Elite, picked up the light novel just because of that ending. Who did it? Studio Lurch. And if you ask the anime fans, do they love or do they like the series? They do. They love the adaptation. But if you ask the light novel fans, no, they don't. You know why? Cut contents. Animation. Do you even know animation? Okay, animations are movements. That's all you need to know. Okay? Animate. Okay? That's why when I said visual, you can see the visual image. Not motion. So, that's another thing that you have to educate yourself with. <laughs> Classroom of the Elite doesn't need the necessary animation perspective of things because it's mind games dialogue things no animation okay <laughs> yeah when you say animation's horrible because there's not much animation it's mostly visuals <laughs> i think it's best for you guys to actually educate and research stuff <laughs> okay because this is my last defense after my next video for Clash of the Elite, that will be my very last video f defending or actually an eye-opening video for all of you. Like, reflect yourself. You know, just reflect yourself. Am I actually hating this anime so much to the point where, oh yeah, it's terrible garbage, you know? And plus, you're actually showing that you will never be satisfied with anything at all. It's actually sad that the fan, the fans or the fandom has turned out like this. There's a lot more for me to say, but it's going to be a long ass video. But unfortunately, I, I just have to stop right now because no one will actually listen. You know, the haters will hate every single time. They will never have an eye opening moment for them. They will continue to be ignorant people till the bitter end that is why we people do not evolve <laughs> we do not actually get better we actually turn worse that is why i make videos for entertainment and at the same time education you know i do these videos for clash of the elite because this is one of the most controversial adaptations ever made because if you've noticed why did kadokawa let uh, Studio Lurch adapt volumes 1, 2, and 3 of Classroom of the Elite season 1 in only 12 episodes. Keep in mind, volume 1 was adapted into 3 episodes. Volume 2 was adapted into 3 episodes. Then volume 3 is adapted into 5 episodes. Do the math, it's 11 episodes. So, the filler episode is volume 4.5. Think about it. 
why would they let Studio Lurch do that? Because Kadokawa knows that it has arcs. Volumes 1, 2, and 3 are prelude. Volumes 4 up to 11.5 is where things get heat up. And each of them, each of the books have their own individual arcs. However, they all have different antagonists. Okay? Because if you think about it, Volume 7 is the end of Ryuin as an antagonist. Studio Lurch or Kadokawa let Studio Lurch adapt up to Volume 7.5 because 7.5 is the aftermath of Ryuin as an antagonist. And here's the kicker. Why would they leave the Volume 5, you know, the scene of Sakenage and Yanakoji's reunion? Why would they leave that out? Because it's the same thing that they did with uh, Season 1, the ending, you know, so that you will know what to expect in the future, okay, in the next season. And that's what they did, Sakenagi as the next villain. So if you think about it, Volume 8 is the buildup of their rivalry. And then Volume 9 is actually the start to actually making Ayana Koji have the attention to Sakenagi using Ichinose, you know. And then Volume 10 is the actual start where they actually fight, but technically not because they want they because Sakenagi wants to fight fair. And then Volume 11 is their final battle. However, the hidden villain Tsukishiro is there. Then next arc, that is why when I said this, I'm pretty sure they're going to adapt year two, uh, season one, up to volume four. Why? Because Tsukishiro is the villain up to volume four. So whenever they adapt year two anime of Clash of the Elite, that's what they'll do. I'm 100% sure. If not, up to 4.5. Because 4.5 is still like volume four in year one. But it's actually a prelude as to who is the next villain. And it's the White Room student. <laughs> and then Volume 7. Another four volumes. 4.5, Volume 5, 6, and 7. Four volumes again adapted into one season. I'm pretty sure that's what they'll do because it's the White Room student as the antagonist. And then Volume 8 up to the next one. The final, the final volume <laughs> of Year 2. Whenever that'll come out is the final arc of year two that is nagumo anyway yeah um i hope you all understand why kadokawa is making these decisions but why would they make it into only 13 episodes is up to them ask kadokawa ask their budget because it's not studio lurch's fault okay they don't control the amount of episodes and the runtime. Kadokawa is the one behind everything, okay? They're also behind Overlord, and that is why Overlord fans are disappointed. It's not Madhouse's fault. Because you know why? Madhouse did Free Ren. Crazy. I know. Crazy. Free Ren is a masterpiece adaptation. Masterful adaptation. A masterpiece anime. So why did Madhouse fumble Overlord? Kadokawa. Again, it's not Studio Lurch's fault. And at the same time, Overlord's adaptation is not Studio Madhouse's fault. Wake up from your ignorance, okay? Because I've seen many people complain. Mess. Season 3 is a mess. Season 3 is a disaster. I I've seen many videos pop up on my YouTube. See you guys on the final video of my classroom delete, which is the state of the series and the fans. See you guys then. I'm not gonna waste any more of my time. Yeah, it's already 3 a.m. I think it's time for me to move on from this series. I think it's time because um, right now the fans are out of it. I think uh, we need a fire extinguisher because it's just getting out of hand. The fans are killing the series. That's why I'm I'm not I'm not one to judge other people saying, "Oh, I'm not going to read the light novel because the fans are toxic." You know, I won't force them to read it. 
because that's how they viewed it. It's not my fault. It's the fans' fault as to why people don't read the light novel. Like, you have to reflect upon yourself as to why would people not read the light novel of Clash of the Elite. See for yourself. Look at your past self. What did you do? Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, the main reason why I just got into the light novel is because of myself. I didn't listen to I didn't listen to the fans before. I just got into the series because I wanted the series. I want more of the series. So, yeah. But seeing the fans right now, Flash and Delete, I'm done. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on my final video. So, yeah. Thank you for this wonderful journey. But, yeah. I know people will still hate the anime forever and ever. The hate won't go away. Bashers won't go away. Even I have some haters as well no matter what i do i always will have haters so yeah <laughs> nothing i can do about that like i said there's nothing i can do as well i can't control these people just like studio lurch they cannot control kadokawa because they're not the boss you have to actually also look up the marxism theory because we study that marxism theory has the superstructure and base studio lurch is the base Kadokawa is the superstructure. They gain profit, but the base is the workers, and that is Studio Lurch. Go ahead and study that theory, because that's all you need. It's an eye-opener. <laughs> Marxism theory. M-A-R-X-I-S-M theory. <laughs> Marxism theory. It's a long theory, but to me... It opened my eyes into the world of industry and actually the real world, you know, how business works. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's my last defense. <laughs> yeah. See you guys then. Peace out.